There are two, two women that God sets up for us to understand, Ahola and Aholiba. Those are the two women's. Now Ahola is Israel and Aholiba is Jerusalem. And as we look at this, we need to consider what God is saying because there's something unique here that the Lord speaks. And I find that really interesting that God speaks in kind of parables of the Old Testament because, you know, people aren't hearing him, what he's saying. And so he, he, he comes down and he talks about a parable. Listen to what it says. It says, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man. There were two women, the daughters of one mother. They played the whore in Egypt. That is amazing. God is speaking that way. It says, thus says the Lord. God said that. And we need to understand what the Lord is saying. So turn your Bible guide to today's passage. And if you don't have a Bible guide, you can get a hold of one. Use the address at the bottom of the screen. Write to us. And we thank you very much for your, your donations, whatever they may be. Praise God for that. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, help the people to understand and make donations accordingly to what you tell them in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you write to us, we'll get you a Bible guide, which is exclusive to this program. And also you can get it if you go to the website at BibleDiscoveryTV.com, BibleDiscoveryTV.com. Click on Donate here. And you can make a donation, and then it'll take you to the PDF files. Very good, because on those PDF files are what's in the Bible guide. And the Bible guide has things we're going to study today, plus more. So as we look at this, listen carefully to the Scripture and as we talk about the ways of truth, this is God speaking to us. I can only name this one thing, the corrupt sisters. See, corruption is a part of a failure of womanhood. Corruption is the failure of womanhood. It's the failure of a principle God put in place. Now, he calls these women whores. That's the failure of a principle. So I need to communicate the Bible says that's a failure of a principle that God put in place. Very important. We read Ezekiel 23 to 24. We look at Ezekiel 23, 1 to 14. Father, I pray today that we would hear you, that the people would understand what you're saying as we explore together the word of God. Help us to be able to have the courage to do what's right in the name of Jesus Christ. And we said together, amen. Now listen carefully to the scripture. I think this is important. It says, the word of the Lord came again to me, saying, son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother. They committed harlotry in Egypt. They committed harlotry in their youth. Their breasts were embraced. Their vir virgin bosom was there pressed. Their names, Ahoyla, the elder and Ahoylaba, her sister, they were mine, and they bore sons and daughters. As for their names, Samaria is Ahola, and Jerusalem is Ahoylaba. Now this is important because we need to understand what God is doing. God identified two nations as sisters who were evil who violated the principles of God. And Jerusalem was one of these sisters. Now Jerusalem's supposed to be the city of God. And it was violating this principle. We need to understand, beloved, that God speaks to the... When we, when we violate the principles of the Word of God, when we violate what God says, that brings a problem. We need to not violate, we need to understand that the Lord Jesus Christ has sacred things in place. That doesn't mean you don't talk about them. It means you talk about them one-on-one. -on -one. Sacred things. Things that are not for public broadcasting. Very important that we understand that. Look at the scripture. Verse 5. Ahoyla played the harlot even though she was mine. She played the harlot even though she was mine. And she lusted for her lovers. The neighboring Assyrians who were clothed in purple, captains and rulers, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding on horses. Thus she committed her harlotry with them, all of them choice men of Assyria, and with all for whom she lusted, with all their idols she defiled herself. She defiled herself. 
She has never given up her harlotry brought from Egypt, for in her youth they had lain with her, pressed her virgin bosom, and poured out their immorality on her, poured out their immorality on her. Therefore I have delivered her in the hand of her lovers into the hand of the Assyrians, for whom she lusted. They uncovered her nakedness and took away her sons and daughters and slew her with the sword. She blamed a byword among the women, became a byword among the women, for they had executed judgment on her. Now this is, this is the result. Samaria and Israel were used by their enemies because they walked away from God. We must never, we must never walk away from God. That's why I say to people, when you choose Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, he's the Lord. Beloved, when we make that decision, we make it for good. For the rest of my life, I will be a Christian. I pledge to you today, no matter what happens, because God has given me eternity. What about you? God has given us eternity. We should pledge to him. Say, Lord, for the rest of my life, and this woman did not do that. And that was Israel. That's why Israel was captured and taken away. God didn't protect her for that reason. Now, listen to this. Verse 11. Now, although her sister Ohilabah saw this, she became more corrupt in her lust than she and her harlotry, more corrupt than her sister's harlotry. She lusted for neighboring Assyrians, captains and rulers, and clothed most gorgeous, gorgeously, horsemen riding on horses, all of them desirable young men. Then I saw that she was defiled. Both took the same way. Both took the same way. But she increased her harlotry. She looked at men and portrayed on the wall images of the Chaldeans portrayed in Vermillion. That, 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 Jerusalem was worse than Israel. They walked away. They walked away and they worshipped their failures. So you know what God did? God left them. You know, God will allow us to make the choices we make. There'll come a time when there's no more choices. There'll come a time when we have to make a decision. And this may be that time today. You may be sitting there thinking, I need to make a decision. May not tell anybody because you're too embarrassed. But God knows because he sees you. It's simple prayer. You pray and you say, Jesus Christ, I need you in my life right now. Please come and take my sin away. I believe you died on the cross and rose again miraculously. And I, and I need you in my life as Lord. Thanks for watching. Remember, check out the full episode of Quick Study and follow us on social media. Start your daily devotional today.